Hello, everybody. Welcome to your capital. What's up? I'm Chuck Wigger, your area state senator. Thank you very much for watching. Today, we're going to talk about the group Decoding Dyslexia. And with us is the state chair for the national organization, Rachel Berger. Thank you for joining us, Rachel. Thanks for having me, Chuck. And this is a big concern, dyslexia, as to what we can do to uh, as policymakers to be uh, more understanding of the issue that is out there. For, it affects um, millions of people in America, uh, students in our schools. It's going to have an impact on learning. And we are doing what we can to help provide more understanding and uh, help people uh, cope with this. So mm -hmm. uh, if I'd like if you could just tell us a little bit more about the organization, Decoding Dyslexia, and uh, what dyslexia is. Sure. Um, Decoding Dyslexia is a grassroots movement made up of um, parents, educators, and other concerned ed individuals about the limited access to interventions that work for our children. Um, it started in 2011 by a, a few parents who were sharing a train ride to New Jersey for a um, dyslexia um, e event uh, for mm -hmm. their kids to learn more about advocacy. And as they were on that train, they, um, I, I think the big topic and the big question they shared was, well, why isn't somebody doing something about this? Yes. By the time they rode home, they decided that maybe they were those people. So yes. fast forward a few years and we have 50 states of um, parents who, parents and educators, like I said, who are actively involved in, in bringing, uh, shedding light on the issue. Okay. And uh, dyslexia, is there a, a common definition of what that is or, or just overall? So an easy definition for parents and others to, to understand is dyslexia is a language-based uh, learning disability. It affects approximately 15 to 20 percent, or one in five kids. Here in Minnesota, we're looking at about 120,000 students that struggle with this in our education system. And um, it affects someone's ability to process language. So um, defined by, you know, some of the hallmark symptoms are poor spelling, poor, slow, labored reading. Um, Students with dyslexia can have difficulties with math facts, with learning a foreign language, with writing, yes. um, and being able to get those thoughts that are in their head out onto paper, paper in sequential, chronological order um, that it makes coherent sense. So, so it's, a, it's a barrier in processing language, yes. whether it might be written or oral, but mm -hmm. there, there's just a barrier and it's it's quite a struggle and it uh, and there is a lot of people that uh, have this that uh, you might not ever know uh, i i read that uh, steven spielberg mm -hmm. one of the most mm -hmm. creative uh, people on the planet uh, has dyslexia and four out of the six sharks on the shark tank i mean a yes. lot of a lot of um very accomplished people have dyslexia they're, they tend to be very outside the box thinkers and yes. really good at critically solving problems, dyslexics. But, um, you know, those are the ones that have, you know, some real good success behind them who've probably gotten the right help at the right stages and kind of risen above, you know, the, the ranks. Okay. Um, the big concern that we have as parents and advocates for our Minnesota children is the children who, who aren't getting the help they need at the time that they yes. need it. And also... And that starts early. It starts very early. Um, you can identify dyslexia um, with functional MRI uh, by the time, a ch with 97% accuracy, by the time a child is five. Okay. Um, so we know, we, we have 30 years worth of data and um, information out there on identifying it and what to do to remediate it appropriately. And kids can be very successful if it's identified early, if they're screened early, and if they're provided the right type of remediation. And so, again, our group um, isn't necessarily, um, you know, I, I, can, I can talk about myself specifically. I'm not concerned specifically for my child. I'm not in this for my child. I'm in this um, and concerned as an actively involved citizen 
for the other students and for the success rate of students as well as the number of teachers that consistently um, reach out to us and ask us about dyslexia and ask us about training and effective instructional modif you know instructional yeah. And it's certainly okay to be in it for your child too. Well, but you know, but, but I for know everyone. my child's going to be okay because yes. we identified him early, yeah. and we provided him the services that he needed um, right away. We didn't wait. Um, and that can be a tribute to how we do it. Yes, it, and it and it is it, it's you know expensive, but again, the reason that I uh, decided to kind of join the ranks and and do something was more that. I am very, very concerned for the students that a, yes. you know, aren't getting the help that they need. Yes. And their parents may additionally struggle themselves, so they may not know how to advocate. So. So we have a national movement that started with that train ride in Jersey. Yeah. Uh, 2011. Uh, you live in Hugo. I do. And there's a very robust uh, group of. Uh, volunteers that are advancing decoding dyslexia in our state, in our region. Um, and my colleague, uh, Senator uh, Roger Chamberlain, has done a lot of work in mm -hmm. organizing and working with the group, and I've had a chance to, to see you as well. So I, I want to mm -hmm. thank Senator Chamberlain for his leadership on this. Absolutely. And you know, tell us uh, you know, what are you know, some of the specific things that you're working on for the state chapter. You, you mentioned the importance of mm -hmm. early identification, yep. the diagnosis, and getting a plan of action. But uh, highlight some of the other things and then what you've been advancing at the state sure. capitol. Sure, so um, as a national movement, we all share some of the same common goals, each individual state. Um, and it's important, I think, for us to, we've identified that to have a definition in state statute of dyslexia goes a long way as a corner piece. So that's, that's one. Yes. The, another is to have early identification of at-risk students. Yes. At-risk meaning they're at risk for possible dyslexia. Mm -hmm. um, early and appropriate <clears throat> remediation for these kids is huge, as we've discussed. Appropriate. Appropriate, yes. um, because there are many ways to remediate a struggling reader, but if we can identify again that this child, in fact, has risk factors for dyslexia and we go about it in the, in the way that works for these children that 30 years worth of data supports, we have the ability to make some huge gains. Um, so again, that appropriate remediation. Um, Access to assistive technology in both the general and the special education classrooms is huge for these kids because they do need modifications and accommodations, as well as, again, um, hearing our teachers in that they need resources, training, et cetera, and, yes. and providing professional development for our teachers. So those are some of our goals. Um, what we've done uh, in, in the three years that we've been around here down at the Capitol in Minnesota is we worked on a a, a tax credit to help ease the burden of parents yes. who are um, paying outside of their school districts right now to pr provide their children with appropriate remediation. We uh, had, again, bipartisan support on that. We you did, did a great job. We did have bipartisan support, um, and I think that is definitely something that the parents really, um, again, if it helps them to help their child, I think it's a great thing yes. um, for us to be able to offer our, in our state until we can you know, work on the other issues. So we did the tax credit. Last year, um, your um, committee saw us and heard us, and we, we worked on a definition and passed a definition of dyslexia in a state statute, which we're very happy with. We think that's a great cornerstone piece. Yes. Um, we will be back this year working on uh, that, that tax credit to ensure that parents continue to have the help they need to support their children while we're working on the education initiatives. Yes. And, um, We've, we've also done some other things with, um, in addition to being down at the Capitol, uh, we've got the Department of Education and some other collaborating agencies who have worked with us on um, a paper, putting together a paper that yes. was released by the Department of Education this year um, called Navigating the Schools with a Struggling Reader or Dyslexic Child, and I think yes. that's a great tool um, for parents and teachers to have access to. And is there a website? that we can refer people to or? Decoding Dyslexia Minnesota has a website which yes. has a lot of great resources on it. The Department of Education has, um, you know, their website has a reference and a link to the paper. And also we have a Facebook page too where people can follow 
um, what we're up to and have resources provided to them. So a lot of information mm -hmm. is available, but again, the key is identification and then getting uh, an appropriate plan of action together, and uh, we all can be a part of that. Yeah, and we can. In terms of policymakers and others that uh, are looking for how they can better support this effort. Mm -hmm. Good. You have a, a pin that says, I, I am dyslexia. Uh, tell us about that pin. My husband and I uh, looked for a way that we could support the work that we're doing and we started a super PAC that would help all of the national states or the 50 state movement be able to um, provide, you know, do what they do well um, and keep those boots on the ground working in the, in the way that they do. And so I Am Dyslexia is the super PAC that helps all of the different individual states um, remain on the ground, remain in it doing what they're doing, but have a way to receive funds and go I and do some fundraising. Okay, but so, so you have a, a full grassroots uh, approach and, and obviously uh, you know, people in the uh, legislative process are a part of that, uh, whether it's at the state level or the congressional level, and of course the local school boards, you know, mm -hmm. working with them in these programs because ultimately uh, for the young people, uh, whether it's in early ed through identification, mm -hmm. uh, that's where it starts at the local level. So it does. you have a, a full plan for getting people mobilized and involved. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I, I think it's something that affects, you know, again, while I'm affected by dyslexia directly because I have family members who have that, this does impact everybody. When we look yes. at our communities and our schools, um, we're all aware that there's an achievement gap and, and you know, specifically there's areas in reading in which we want to improve and I think everybody has a piece in, you know, bringing that awareness up and helping to bring forth some change. Um, it's not just uh, something that affects me because I have a student with that, but it's something that affects all of our young people. Great. Well, Rachel Berger, I want to thank you, congratulate you on the outstanding progress that you're making for your advocacy, behalf of uh, people affected with dyslexia, and it does have an impact on all of us. So, uh, job well done. We wish you, you continued success. Um, any concluding words you'd like to share with our viewers? No, I just want to thank you for having me here today um, to give an update on what we're doing and how folks can be involved. And uh, certainly would encourage anybody who has a struggling reader or an interest in learning more about dyslexia to go to our website, which is decodingdyslexiaminnesota.org, and um, to follow us on Facebook, again, Decoding Dyslexia Minnesota. Um, thanks again for having us in. I know we'll see you down at the Capitol during session. Well, thank you, Rachel Berger, and again, the chair of Decoding Dyslexia and you know, local from uh, Hugo and a part of a national movement. We wish you continued success. And if you have questions, comments, want to get more involved, get a hold of uh, Rachel or uh, part of the growing group of people that are making a big impact. If you have questions of me, I encourage you to give me a call. My cell phone is 651-770. 0283. With Rachel Berger, I'm Chuck Weger. Thank you very much for watching.